ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. So over the weekend, and what a weekend it was as well, with the boys from the BrewTube community coming down for a drink and a beverage or two. And I won't tell you what time I got home, quarter past four in the morning. Anyway, uh, I came in the following day to clean up because I ended up coming into the brewery late on in the AM of Sunday morning and having a few drinks and uh, I thought I'd come in yesterday and have a bit of a clean up and I noticed that the last beer that we made last week on Friday actually the best bitter the temperature was at 21.9 and there's no way it should be getting that high with the regulations that we've got the regulating effect of the coolers that we've got should I say and it turns out that the 12 volt power supply had let the smoke out so basically the chiller was working fine but the valve that supplies or allows that cold glycol to run into the tank hadn't been activated because the 12 volt PSU had given up the ghost and if you look at this little little fella here that is a little glass fuse and you might be able to just see there that it has actually popped and it's all shattered inside so obviously there was a more catastrophic aha I was gonna say that would have been a symptom to something else that's happened but I've just spotted it actually and you see that chip there it's got a got a hole blown out of it just there so we've got a failed chip so I don't have any of those chips and these are four quid off Amazon so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go online we're gonna buy some more of these um, there's no real way of knowing though if the 12 volt power supplies failed on the control boxes so I'm going to introduce a little 12 volt panel indicator as well so I'm going to attach that to the output of these these are only one amp but the little panel indicators only run on 20 milliamps, so it, it won't even know it's connected to it. And uh, I could even just get rid of this LED here, and that itself would provide probably enough power for the panel indicator, but it makes no difference either way, to be fair. So I'm going to order some of these from um, RS Components, I think. Not these, the panel indicators. And I'll just pick these up from Amazon and we use them as a jelly bean part. They're fused, obviously the fuse has worked. Uh, relatively safe um, switch mode power supply so we'll just pop these in again and use them just like that as a consumable. So that's that. We've got another project though today. So I've been up into the kitchen and uh, Tom's been telling me that he would like a hot plate on the grill. At the moment we've just got all grills, lots of them. It's about as big as this table almost to be fair. So I've got some steel and I'm going to cut it down and turn it into a hot plate. So I thought I would share the process with you. I'll just move all this out of the way and we'll put the steel up on the table so you can have a look at it. There she is, 10 mil plate, I believe it's 10 mil, I think that's thick enough, yeah 10 mil plate, so this was courtesy of Froggy I believe, thank you very much Chris, and we're going to cut this down to 310 in one direction, which is there. and then 520 in the tother which is there and then we're going to clean it up with a flat disc both sides and then take it next door put it on the grill put some oil on it season it and then cook on it might even do a burger for dinner
Yeah, I think all the crap will go to one side or just off the edge down here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to cook with a um, angle grinder, so it's not perfect, but it doesn't make no difference, does it really? Shall we get some heat on it? Yeah. Shall we do it now? It'll look good, won't it? Do they fire up them too? Or are they pain in the arse? <laughs> looking nice and seasoned as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, you scratch it up and the bur it just burns straight back through again. That's going to be nice, that is. Yeah, for dinner. been spoiled with that burger that's really made a difference so the idea behind why Tom wanted that hot plate was so we could steam the burger buns on top of you know the stack when we stack the burgers and without a doubt it's made a real difference to that brioche bun so the improvements don't end there I've got a few more things to do one of them is improve the heated pass where we store the meals as we're plating them up and putting them together so they sit under the hot lights. You've seen them on all these 
cooking shows and what have you. At the moment we can only do six meals at a time because we've only got six hot lamps. So I'm going to add another tier to the top of the hot lamps, therefore giving us about nine. Nine places where we can store um, or plate up the meals. So that means I've got to go upstairs online and start searching for a stainless steel shelf that I can bolt onto the top. And then also some of the heat lamp um, holders, if you like. So I'm going to go upstairs and do that and, and probably clean up all the dust in here that I've made from grinding that steel up. Power supplies ordered, as well as some other things as well. I've been playing around on the computer and uh, we're thinking about a little bit of branding for the kitchen. So, you know, like the burger that we just did then, well, we sell all sorts of other box meals as well and they are designed to kind of eat in the beer garden or take away with you. They're not part of our sit down and dine in the restaurant range of menu items. And I thought it'd be nice if we had some custom grease proof paper printed out. So I've just been online having a look how much it is. It's not cheap stuff, but it only works out at like a penny a meal when you get a lot printed. So that's what we're going to go with. And uh, they come in A3 sheets and you cut them or they will cut them down to what size you want. So ultimately we'll be cutting them down to A5 sheets just to kind of separate the chips from the burger and that kind of thing and that's what we've gone for what do you think i think it looks all right doesn't it and it's printed on this brown backing to kind of emulate brown grease proof paper if you like but that's what i've spent most of this afternoon doing and the time is now approaching quarter to five i've got a few other things that i want to do but i'm probably not going to start them today simply because I don't want to be here too late. It feels like it's been a long day. Let me take you off the tripod and show you some stuff. So obviously these are the offcuts from the hot plate that we made. So we'll pop that outside. That will be used for something else at some point, I'm sure. I've got some heat pads coming as well. I don't know if I spoke to you about it the other day. This one didn't work for me because it was too yeah, I did talk to you about it. The watt per area was too high. So we're going to change that. But I went over to see a friend of mine the other day. He's probably watching, Dave. And uh, well, not only did he show me his fantastic brewery and give me a few beers, but he gave me a couple of components. Here's one of them. You might recognize this as an evaporator so this little beauty is part of an air conditioning unit that came off of a van I don't know what that big blob of stuff is there let's hope it's not a leak behind that but we'll see in a bit looks like a temperature sensor actually yes it is there's a diaphragm there so that's a condenser Refrigerant R134A, we know we can get it and it tells you what lubricant to put in there as well. That's handy, we know what oil we need to buy. And over here, we have the condenser unit complete with compressor and everything else. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to become another project in terms of building our own refrigeration system and learning exactly how they work. But that's not for today, but for another day. So uh, we'll wrap today's vlog up actually, and we'll pick it all up tomorrow when we'll be probably doing something completely different. So we'll see you then, boys and girls. Oh, cheers.